I was five, six years old and my mum took me to hear Horowitz playing Rack 3, which it was mind-blowing. Now I look back, I don't think when you're a child you don't realise what, what you're seeing and hearing, the genius of it. I wish I could go back in time. But uh, I saw and heard this beautiful sound, which was a flute, and this amazing, beautiful woman playing the flute. And it was a flautist called Renee Siebert, I think. She was very, very young, but when you're a child, she sort of, she looked sort of like a, a princess sat there. And I was completely and utterly captivated. And I drove my parents mad for a flute. And the next week she took me down Broadway and that was it. I was getting my first flute with her and took it from there. And she became my teacher and I came back to study with her here when I was 16. So there's a lot of memories here in New York for me. And it's the reason why I guess I became a flute player and a musician. Well, when Lisa telephoned me, asking me whether I would like to record with her, I just jumped at this idea because I know what a fabulous musician she is because I had already heard her at Cambridge uh, playing flute quartets with the members of the Brodsky Quartet. And I said to her then, a few years ago, I said, Lisa, I would love to play something with you. So, um, and the connection to her parents, I don't know, maybe over 10 years or more, I think. Um, I said, of course, I, when she called and asked me, I said, I would love to play for you. And so she said, you know, I would love to do something with you and maybe we could record something. I said, great. I said, I'm in. So that's how this whole project started. And uh, not only the fact that I admire her musicianship, but she's a very humble individual that has, she's a great girl, she's a great human being. For me that is very important on top of being a wonderful musician because I think that is what expresses uh, through her music which comes from her soul and for me that is the most important thing. Our friendship over the years, her parents' friendship, I think all these things are um, all joined and for me that was something very, very important. And then we did this recording. So I'm very honored and privileged to have played with her because I have not played with flute, you know, professionally and never done a recording with flute. And when she first said, you know, what about the foray violin sonata? And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so difficult for piano. Uh, of course, I have played it with violinists, never with a flute player. But it worked on the flute because, she, first of all, she has a beautiful sound. I think uh, this piece is so emotional. It's got so many colors. Well, for me, uh, I play mostly with violinists and I've been surrounded by violinists. So what was, it was a challenge for me to play the foray with flute because um, I learned much more about breathing with the music, with the phrase, than even with violinists because I was, I was taking certain things for granted. But with a wind player, I think there's a lot more. You've got to give space. You've got to time it.
Well, this was an absolute honor and a pleasure for me to do this recording. And I just hope we will continue our uh, collaboration in the future and play some concerts in England. The trauma that she went through, the whole family, I think it has grown. She has grown a lot as a musician and a human being. And uh, she had a great network of friends and family and her friend is right sitting here listening to this. And I think we were all, we all grew as well together in many ways, you know, during that period, which is in the past now, which is great. So, which is great now. So this is a whole new thing to go, you know, going forward. And I'm glad it worked out the way it did. As she said, the light at the end of the tunnel. I was always a huge fan of the 4-8 violin sonata from growing up surrounded by strings. And it was always a work that I felt could really work for flute. Um, I don't normally play a lot of violin repertoire because I don't feel it works on flute. But this particular sonata has got the most incredible piano part and it, it just it really does work with flute. and I, I always loved it and it, I just started playing it in my 20s and performing it in recitals something I always always wanted to record so it's been a, a dream to work on this and record it with such an incredible pianist with Rohan. Yeah I think for me it, it, that because obviously my father's a violinist so hearing him play it it, it is part of my childhood and so it's got quite a lot of sentimental value to me here um, playing this, this piece and hearing great violinists throughout my life play the 4 sonata. So yeah, it does have a very special, it just takes you back to those childhood memories as well, which is gorgeous. So, okay, Après en, en Rêve is one of the most beautiful melodies and it, it's such a popular, popular piece normally played on cello, violin. Again, another piece that Rohan and I felt would really work with flute and piano. And it has a lot of um, sentiment, romance, and apparently uh, Foray wrote this piece uh, a year before his fiance had left him for another man and the story is told that this piece was sort of a re reflection on that so who knows what he was going through at the time but it definitely has that sort of sentimental dark passionate emotional edge to it <laughs> flautist in an orchestra it's always a dream for them to play this piece and I always adored it from early childhood it's got this mystical magical story with the most exquisite theme and as flautists we're always working on the opening theme the line it's it's very 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 difficult to play and 
uh, stamina and development. So it was wonderful to be able to, again, record this with Roham. A, because his playing is so tremendous, you feel that you've got the background and richness of an orchestra, even though it's just the piano. We don't have the full orchestra. But it was um, absolutely stunning to work with such an amazing musician and, and a dream for me to play this exquisite piece, which I have always adored. And uh, I always promised my mother that I would record this. So I actually recorded this for her. We came up with the name Essence because on a personal level, I'd had a very tough year last year and I had to take the year off because my six-year-old daughter was very, very ill and I had to spend 10 months basically with her, getting her through a very, very traumatic, serious time. And throughout that journey, I just always thought about light at the end of the tunnel and we were very positive and music was a huge part of our journey. I've always loved Impressionism. I've always loved Impressionist art. I've always loved the French composers. It, it plays such an important role in flute playing, the whole French repertoire. And it just felt like a natural journey to turn this CD into a personal experience, personal journey, musical experience, share love, friendship and light, light at the end of the tunnel and Essence seemed the right title for this and was genuinely from the core, the heart and here we are. <laughs>